question for Raker Vebby. Anyone? Someone in the audience? This gentleman, well, someone's got someone over here. Did I hear how tall is the Duke of Kent? <laughs> Raise your hand if you got a question. Raise your hand if you got a question. No question. In the meantime, in, 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 the, in the meantime, I have to tell you guys have been on tour. I've caught you both on tour together. And what's it like uh, on the road, going up and down the road together? You know, just you know, going up the road, down the road together. You have any stories, crazy stories? From yeah, the road that Joe. Joe Elliott's got a big, huge <laughs> song list. He's got a big, huge <laughs> CD collection. Um, you know, it, it's always a lot more enjoyable when you're on tour with people that you like. Um, oh. Not, not only whose music you respect, I mean, oh, we're all big fans of Cheetah, but, but they're genuinely wonderful human beings, as are their crew. Okay, that's enough to be behind here somewhere. So I think you do have a fever, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Delirious. Um, so, you know, it's. We, it's a, with Leopard, we try and make it a very low pressure environment uh, backstage and, and you know, we, we kind of try to enjoy the process and enjoy the work and it's, it's genuinely nice to be with professionals and, and good people and, and we've toured many times with Cheap Trick and it's, it's always been a pleasure. I guess the question I would have from the both of you is, have you ever collaborated in this songwriting together just on the road? Hell no. <laughs> All right, so yeah. so Rick, do you have any stories about yeah, the music you could tell that uh, Vivian would have well, heard from? We toured together Australia, you know, a number for a number of years, and uh, like I said, uh, we got to the show, uh, and there, Vivian's playing one of my guitars. Yeah. Tell us about that, Vivian. <laughs> Rick, Rick has a few guitars, so I've, I've borrowed a couple on occasion. And, um, yeah, you know, you're getting one that I'm having made for you. Really? Well, after today's interview, of course I am. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, Rick has a few guitars. And, and, um, Joe's been to my house. He never showed up. I don't have your address. You're not going to get it now. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, yeah, I did steal a couple of Rick's guitars, but he noticed and I had to give them back. Yeah. And so, I got to play a bunch of the old Def Leppard stuff. And, and, and then somebody's been hiding for 30 or 40 years. I saw that at the end of the last tour. Oh, yeah? Well, I, they wouldn't let you touch them. But, uh... <laughs> All right, well, so we got one more question. We got maybe one or two more. Yeah. Hey, guys, this is a really serious question here. Um, rock and roll is dead. Fuck so you. What the, uh, that's not my opinion. That's not my opinion. But what do you tell kids that want to make a career in music, in rock and roll, there's no there's no money in it any longer. What do you uh, tell them? Well, you got to do it for the right reason. You know, you got to do it for the love of it. And eventually, you'll find a way to get money out of it. I think Vivian and, my, Vivian and myself, it's like, we're musicians, we're supposed to be poor. It just didn't work out that way. Uh, and my kids, my, my youngest son, uh, he was a straight A student. Uh, sent him to college, he was on the two national honor societies. He says, um, Give it up, after the first year, I want to quit. I'm just going to kill him. <laughs> and, but if you want to be a musician, you, 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 you've got to do it for the love of what you do. I mean, it's like, I'm, 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 I see Vivian more than I see my wife, and I'm starting to get eyes on <laughs> <laughs> So, do things on the horizon. Okay. Now, Vivian. You had a custom shop signature guitar. That and was a Rick Nielsen guitar. Right? Yes. Oh, I have a Rick Nielsen guitar. Oh, I have a Rick Nielsen guitar. Custom shop guitar. It is right. a beautiful guitar. I had to choose the frets from those little skinny things. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a disgruntled <laughs> customer. <laughs> but it, it is a genuinely fantastic guitar. I love it. Right. But yes, I did. Custom shop guitar came out uh, early last year. It turned out very well, thanks to Philip and the guys at Custom Shop. And you just happen to have a new guitar on the horizon, too. Do indeed, yes. Hey, wait a minute, I just, I just invited you up here. Give me your ass. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, I'll be back later. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're all in. But tell us about that new guitar that's coming out, too. Uh, it's a new old guitar. It's um, Epiphone or Dillon version of 7298737, which is my original Dio. So you're a born. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, I bought it when I was 15. It was a wine red deluxe. I ordered a gold standard. Uh, I took emery paper to it, sand paper to it that night. Um, Rory Gallagher was my first guitar. Oh, I, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. I never yeah. like shiny guitars as a result of that. So I took sandpaper to this Les Paul when I got home that night. Um, and about a week or two later, I took it to a guy in Belfast uh, and asked him to repaint it a dull matte black. And then I changed out all the hardware, the machine heads, and not the frets, the pickups, everything about it. And uh, that was the guitar I, I did the Holy Diver album and tour with with Ronnie. Yeah. And uh, I, I now it's been in, in storage for many many years. Um, and I only ever play it when I go and do shows with Last in Line, which is uh, remnants of the Dio band. And, and, uh, so anyway, yes, Epiphone have the prototype over there, which yeah, I just saw last night for the first time. That's right. So we got to get the pickups sorted out, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, we're going to we're going to flip flop them. But yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for that. And on the horizon, new for Rick, um, you are a road warrior, being out there all the time playing shows. What's on the horizon for you? Uh, and and the band is on tour. Um, let's see. Getting on tour. Uh, I hope to die on tour. Uh, well, you're doing a good job with it. Yeah, yeah. That's the way to do it. Excuse me, security. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. No, we'd like so to you're play. not banned dinner tonight, then, no? No, we're too dumb to quit. And then we just got, we, we finally played at the Cameron Club. Yes, you did. We played at the Cameron Club. We played, oh. we played Liverpool with these guys the night before. There's only about 25,000. And the next night, 300. But we sold ours out. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> And so yeah, we're all we just finished another album. We, you know, even the companies don't want to hear it. I mean, we, luckily, cheap trick. We've never progressed, which is perfect. And, you know, once in a while, we get these fancy producers that want to put a keyboard on there or something. And so after we cry about it and let them do it, and then the, then they quit the business, we're still in it. All the all the managers I've had have I've sued and lost, and but we don't have them anymore. We still have the whole band. Well, I tell you what. All of us fans out there can't wait for the new Chip Trick record, right? Yeah! yeah. Oh, that's more than we sold last year. Woo! I tell you what, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here on this panel this afternoon here at the Gibson Experience. We're going to be hanging out. So please, enjoy yourself at the Gibson Experience. Vivian Campbell! Yeah. Rick Nielsen! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all so much for being here. We'll be right back with more stuff.